G'day, it is uh, Friday the 8th of November. Good morning to you here on Facebook. Good morning to you here on Instagram. Uh, Facebook is doing very funny, strange things. Let's just clear that, shall we? How are you? What is one word to describe? G'day, Kelly, you are first cab off the rank, my love. What's one word to describe how you are today? Good morning, Erin. Brooklyn in the house, our usual suspects. Lovely to have you here, ladies. Thanks for tuning in. So if you haven't tuned in before, my name's Tanja. I'm a peak performance specialist, predominantly for real estate and property professionals. Every single thing that I do is designed to give you access to live a life that you love now, fulfilling your potential now. Why? Because I believe you deserve to be happy and deeply fulfilled now. So on a rapid fire Friday, I just simply reflect on my top one-on-one -on -one coaching themes for the week and just rapid fire some tips so you can take them and use them in your uh, yourself and your business. Kelly is excited. Nice one. Erin, how are you, my love? Brooklyn, how about you? Can't see who's here on um, Facebook yet, but as soon as you guys um, appear, I will wish you a good morning. So let's get stuck <coughs> straight into it. I feel like I'm a bit nasally this morning. Sorry about that. I have a question for you. When you get a setback, when something happens in your life, how long do you get knocked down for uh, typically? So just write it in. By the way, if you are not driving, Erin's tired but feels like a good day. Yeah, if I'm really honest with you, I feel a bit tired too. I've got like those sandpaper eyes, which is kind of perfect for this first piece that I'm going to share. Um, when you, when you get knocked back, when you get a setback, when you get a, a an issue, a challenge or a concern, g'day, wearing your worth, how are you, beautiful, Sarah Gale? When you get knocked down, knocked back, how long does it take you to bounce back from the setback? This is the question I want to ask you this morning. How long does it take you to bounce back from a setback? I want to give you a scenario from one client this week. So I'm coaching my beautiful client. His mojo is fully not flowing. He's in a real funk, just meh, not feeling the love for himself or life at all. And, and what happened, the setback was uh, he had a death in the family on Monday. And when I was coaching him, it was the Wednesday. And I obviously, you know, I <clears throat> was sorry to hear that, having recently had a death um, uh, often too long. Kelly's saying, uh, feeling fab. Oh, good, Brooklyn. <clears throat> Often too long, Kelly's saying, you, you get, uh, when you have a setback, you get knocked down for often too long. Okay, got that. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Marianne, good, g'day, good to have you. G'day, good, good, I can't even speak this morning. So I said, no, obviously, I'm, you know, empathizing and with him. And, but here's what I found really interesting. What was happening was he was kind of writing everything off, like he'd had three days off, wasn't really working, was just kind of really checking out and switching off. And I said to him, you know, it's understandable, you're grieving. And I said, you know, do you, um, you know, can I ask who the family member was? And he said, it was my auntie. And I said, okay. I said, were you really close? He said, no. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm curious about that. You know, and, he's, and he said, I think it's because I'm a, um, a hyper empath. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, I just feel like I'm really a hyper empath. I'm feeling into everybody else's feelings and I'm kind of taking it on. I said, I got that. Okay. Yeah. And I said, and does that belief, like, you know, saying that defining yourself as I am a, by the way, the two most powerful words you can say for yourself is I am. And what follows after that, you're really creating your reality. So, you know, he's saying, I am a hyper empath. I said, does that belief system, does that actually empower you? And he said, no, it doesn't. And I said, okay, so do you think it's serving you? He said, definitely not. I said, okay, well, we need to create a better belief system. And he agreed. And I said, what else do you think is at the source of kind of like you checking out of life? And uh, he said, I'm just really tired. <clears throat> so for those that are watching this, are tired. Talia, 11.11, good morning, my love. How are you? Long time no share the DMs. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, by the way, if you're watching this live, type in live. If you're watching the record, type in the record. And hopefully all of you on Facebook, your names will load soon and I can give you some personal love because I genuinely love that you are here. And here's what else I found interesting. He kind of really checked out, switched off, given up, quit. He was still making some calls because, you know, he's a listing selling agent, but he checked out. And he goes, I'm just really, really tired. I go, yeah, I got that. And he said, he goes, I think actually I'm using this as an excuse to have some rest. And that's when we got to the source of what's really going on. And I got this really great insight for myself. Um, I said, you know, rest is 
a, a shorter term for restoration when we are returning something back to its original form. And when you're particularly in real estate, you know, it's not a job that you clock in and you clock out. Real estate is self-generated. You've got to generate every aspect. You've got to generate the client, the stock, the buyers, the advertising, the money for the advertising, like the energy around it, like everything you have to generate. That takes energy. Whether you're watching this and you're in real estate or property or not, what you do, what we do in our lives takes energy. And if we don't rest, we do not restore ourselves to our original form of vitality. Oh, that's a whole lot of love coming through on Facebook. Thank you so much. Now, listen, I am going to be super responsible for my, my <coughs> coaching here because for the last two weeks, I have not had enough restoration for sure. I've been averaging four to five hours a night. I can feel my tank is kind of empty and my adrenals are pushing to keep me going. I do not endorse this. I've just been catching up on a bunch of stuff and whatever. So where are you getting knocked down and set back in your business and life and, and checking out and then kind of hanging out, maybe an emotional quicksand? What are the beliefs that you have about yourself and tune into them and ask yourself, are they empowering or disempowering? G'day, Brendan. How are you, champ? <clears throat> First week in your new opportunity, <clears throat> pardon me, at uh, Commercial Collective. How's it been going, my friend? And when you get knocked down and set back and you pull the plug and you're deep, you know, like you're just disconnected, I want you to just tune into yourself and ask, like, what's really, really going on for yourself? Now, for this particular client, he's, he's, this was his belief system. He doesn't rest. He doesn't rest during the week and he, ha he kind of just keeps working. And if he's not working, he's doing home renos. And if he's not doing home renos, he's training at the gym. And I said, when do you rest? He goes, yeah, I actually don't. And I said, so you have no strategy for rest during your week? He goes, no. And so when something big happens, you, you use that as an excuse to pull the plug and let go and restore because his belief system was that he couldn't rest, restore otherwise. I said, what would life be like if you actually factored in time for restoration? He said, well, that would be a game changer. And I said, and can you actually give yourself permission to do that? And he said, yes. So that's what he's working on this week. And I thought that was just too important not, not to share and really wanted to ask you, listen, like, let me know right here, right now. Do you factor in time for, for rest? And are you effectively restoring you, yourself back to your original form? Just type in here on our Instagram and, of course, on Facebook. So that was point number one. Uh, okay. Uh, the other thing is I really noticed with some clients this week, <clears throat> As a coach, I'm on the outside, right? I'm not, you know, you can't see the ocean from inside your own fishbowl. And many clients sort of sometimes feel like they're not progressing. They might be progressing in their sales and their business, but personally, I have to say what was obvious this week with a lot of clients was their energy, their phys physicality, their intention, their vibration, everything was just elevated. And it's a beautiful thing as a coach when you can reflect that to someone. So this point is... You may not be aware of your own human transformation because you're in that skin bag that we walk around in and you can't see or feel the contrast. But I want you to know that the beauty of just taking action and those little incremental changes will give you access to pure transformation long term. So please don't underestimate whatever it is you're doing to work on yourself, whether it's listening to podcasts, reading a book, getting a massage, meditating, tuning into stuff like this, what Whatever it is, talking to a friend, writing in a journal, being creative, being courageous, when you do that consistently and time after time, you really start to build some incremental transformation. And honestly, too many of you are cracking the whip that you're not where you should be or thought you ought to be or where they or he or she are. And you just need to focus on where am I now and ask yourself in this moment, where was I three months ago compared to today? <clears throat> what has changed? And I want to also invite you to ask yourself, is your life therefore headed in the right direction? Are you feeling more? empowered is your bank balance getting fuller are your scales getting lighter like what are you working on and if you're not working on anything maybe you're missing a why <clears throat> wearing your worth yep I factor rest time and I know when I have not given that enough time time enough oh yeah hallelujah yes I hear you Sarah absolutely rest is important to me too yes thank you um Erin no unfortunately yeah listen Erin you know this is going to be a great access for you to 
I just love this word. It was a real eye opener for me. Rest is just a shorter word for restoration, restoring yourself to your original form. You owe it to yourself. They say on the plane, give yourself the oxygen before you give it to other people. We cannot give what we don't have. And um, the game of validation and seeking validation is why we give when we need to actually replenish. So please, Emily, good morning. Comstar, good morning to you, my lovelies. Thanks for tuning in. So that's a really important one. Factor in time, certainly daily or at least weekly for personal restoration. Good morning. Great to have you here. <clears throat> and uh, just to take some time out today for yourself to reflect on how much of you and your life transformed, even in one area in the last three months. And bloody give yourself some credit. Like, really? Give yourself some credit for where you are. Listen, I know what it's like to be wanting to be over there. Over there, Eckhart Tolle talks about it all the time, like over there is better than over here and we're trying to get over there when we want to, you know, the, the this moment is a gift. That's why it's called the present and our true responsibility is to show up as present as possible, as right here, right now as possible. And if you are right here, right now feeling anxious or worried, you're not present. You're thinking and reflecting or stuck in the past or you're concerned in future forecasting something in the future that may or may not happen. And you are depleting your energy. And then there's this moment right here, right now called life. And we're not present and when we're not present we're not tuned in to the opportunity for synchronicity and universal alignment with our higher self and we miss the whispers my friends do you get me we miss the whispers yes so grateful for everything beautiful good morning to you just for d4 <clears throat> great to have you here of course so it's really important to remain present a great resource on that is Urquhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. We are addicted to being human doings and we need to be human beings. Who we be determines what we do or don't do, which completely influences what we have or don't have. Human doings are just doing, 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 doing everything we believe we need to get validation and approval from others and we're often too exhausted. We might have what we want, but we're not enjoying it. So where can you show up and be present? Where can you let go of the anxiety and the worry and be present? Because truly being present gives you a very different perspective on problems. Okay. Oh, this was a really big one. I've, I've got a beautiful client I work with. They are a founder of a company that now has four equal directors and they are really, really challenged by uh, not feeling like they have a level of leadership going on in the in the directorship of their business and as a result are considering you know whether they want to stay and play or go and do something else and I said to you know whatever you choose to do I'll support you but I want you to make choices in an empowered state I posted on Instagram this week when emotions are high intelligence is low have you ever made a decision when your emotion is high just type in, yes, I have, and what's the outcome been? Have you quit the job? Have you ended the relationship? Did you smash something you love? Like when your emotions are high, our intelligence is low because we are reactive rather than responsive. We're in fight, flight, free or freeze rather than presence and grace. And we don't make great quality um, choices. And here's what I got to unpack with this particular client. <laughs> Pictures by Pauline. Hey, great to have you here, beautiful. 72, is that the year you were born? bloody good year that year. I don't know why I'm doing bad Scottish accents, but anyway, I have to amuse myself. Here's what was happening with this particular director. They were stuck in the stories of what they were telling themselves about their fellow directors and about the business. And listen, if you want to be empowered and you want to access to peak performance and conditioning for success, you have to be the author, not the story. You know, you have to be the author, not the story. What do I mean by that? Notice what you're telling yourself about other people, other situations, and even the world in general. Is your storytelling positive and empowering and full of gratitude and abundance and surrender and grace and vulnerability and courage? Or is it full of criticism and judgment and blame and shame and comparison? Are you living above the line or below the line? I'm curious. I'm so sorry. I still can't see all my friends that are here on Facebook. Um, it's just not loading. It's one of those things. Telstra says it'll be fixed by the 12th. I'm going to, I'm going to imagine that that's actually happened. Uh, so have you ever done that? And are you living above the line or below the line? 
rather than get stuck in the story, this is what I invited the, my client to do. I said, I want you to get your pen and paper out and I want you to mind map all, this, all the current elements of your role because it's the role that they're really not happy with, even though they created the company. And I said, I want you to mind map all the elements of the role. Great. And then every little element, like little bubbles, I want you to tune into yourself and ask, am I in an empowered state or a disempowered state with those? As soon as we got to a disempowered state, I go, okay, well, what's the story? And she had a massive story about it. And I said, okay, and if you gave up the story that he is the way that is and he does this to you and la, 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 and you just got strategic and you applied the three steps for success, which you know I bang on about this, which are raise your standards simplify your strategies and elevate your state. If you gave up the story, because that's just drama, and you focused on the three steps for success, which one would you apply to that element where you're disempowered? And is, I mean instantly you see someone get out of victimhood and get into creator mode and get an access to an action that they can take and they have a resolution straight away with an action they could take like instant, and we did this with a few scenarios, and here's what I witnessed. Energy restoring, energy restoring, clarity returning, forgiveness occurring. I sound like a rapper all of a sudden, but that's true, that's what happens. Too many, this is a human epidemic. Stuff is gonna happen to you in your life. Shit happens all the time, and I promise you, it is not what happens that determines who you are. It is what you decide about yourself, others in the world that defines your experience. Make sense? Jen Rom 50, hello. I love that be the author, not the story. I'm in the story at the moment. Oh, thank you for sharing. Bloody awesome vulnerability in a public forum. I love it. I love it. Good on you. So, yes, you can't, like, just be the author, not the story. And if you don't like the narrative, if you don't like the chapter, if you don't like what you're reading, guess what? You can create a whole new chapter. You can create a whole new book. You don't have to read that anymore. Interrupt the pattern. There are five reasons why we stay stuck in story. Here's what they are really, really quickly. If you're driving, don't try and write this down. If you are not driving, grab a pen and paper now. I've shared this many times. Number one, we're addicted to being right about our shitty beliefs about ourselves and we get stuck having itty bitty shitty committee parties in here that do not serve us, drains our power, robs our effective problem solving ability, our innovation and certainly depletes our intuitive intelligence. Number two, we avoid responsibility. That's what this person was doing. They were just blaming everybody else as to why they were in a funk. There's no power there. And when there's no power there, we end up falling into number four. But number three is safe and comfortable. This is the main one, my friends. This is where most people hang out and kumbaya, set up camp and toast marshmallows. We stay safe and comfortable because you know what? what? Let me ask you. I'm sorry I can't see comments on Facebook, but my friends here on Instagram, why do you think you and I stay safe and comfortable? Why do we stay safe and comfortable? Why do we not take risks? Shout out to my girlfriend, Tina, Tina Christian Calder, Tina, sorry, Tiffany, um, <laughs> Tiffany Kingston Calder, just combined two soul sisters for my peacock cup. I love tea, it's my religion. Why do you think we do that? Why do you think we stay safe and comfortable? I'm curious. I'll fill in the gaps because we care what people think. We are so concerned about what other people think of us. We, we block our opportunity to be a contribution. We block our opportunity to live our full potential out loud. Ask yourself in this moment, where are you holding yourself back because you're afraid of what people will think about you. They'll think you're too much. They'll think you're too bright. They'll think you're full of yourself. They'll think you think you're a you know, hero. Where are you getting in the own, your own way of your own unique thumbprint and self-expression? So we, we get to be right about our shitty beliefs about ourselves. We avoid responsibility and blame others. We stay safe and comfortable hanging out in familiar territory that we don't like, but we know it there. And there's no risk of being seen. There's no risk of being cracked open and having people judge us because we hate being judged because our ego wants connection and validation and approval more than anything because we fundamentally believe we're not good enough. Is this making sense, my friends? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? And I'd love you to write in what's one thing you're hearing for yourself inside of this. We also get to be a victim. 
powerless. That's where this client was being. Absolute victim at the mercy of external circumstances relating to themselves like they don't have the power to change their reality. And let me tell you, this person is a bloody trailblazing, fire cracking. She doesn't know this yet, but I've just potentially secured a phenomenal speaking gig at a massive tech, a prop tech event in America. She's got an email in her inbox. You know who you are. So I'm a big fan of hers. I'm a big fan of all my clients. We need to be, be fans of ourselves. So we're victims, giving up our power and relating like we can't change external circumstances. This is why I'm a peak performance coach because you're actually a miracle. I'm a miracle too. And how dare we walk around and take up space feeling like we're not good enough when we're it's a one in 14 trillion chance of us actually being incarnated and we're people floating on a rock in space. I don't know how more miraculous we can get. Now, why do we... Um, why are we addicted to being right? Why do we avoid responsibility? Why do we play safe and comfortable, hang out familiar territory we don't like? Why do we play the victim? Because ultimately, I've said this many times, but I'm going to repeat it often. You and I fundamentally believe that we are flawed and we're not good enough. Some will be at 0.4% and some will be at 100% and everywhere in between. It's just part of being human. Why did we believe that? Because as a kid, something happened and we made it mean we're not good enough. It's just that simple. It really is. It just doesn't serve us. And the reason we do all that is because we're seeking significance. We unconsciously create drama and chaos in our worlds to feel something, to feel alive, to feel like we matter, to be seen and to belong, but it's not what we came here to do. So if you've got drama and chaos going on, it's, consider it's just your little guy, your little girl wanting attention, wanting to get noticed. We do this subconsciously. You'll know, you can see people who are overcompensating, especially in real estate. You hear it all the time. He's got a big ego. She's got a big ego. And that people are, you can feel when people are congruent, can't you? You can feel when people are congruent and true to themselves. Or you can feel when they're overcompensating and dominating and controlling. That's just their little selves trying to run the show. So what I loved about that coaching session this week is because I got to witness someone deeply in victimhood and by the end of it, just boom, 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 boom. I'm going to take this action. I can do this and just back in her power, back in her mojo. And that's where she makes absolute magic happen because she's a phenomenal operator. So that's what I want to share about that. Um, oh, leaders, you know, leaders watching this, I'm going to say this again. When you're performance managing your people, when you're holding your people accountable and they're not doing what they promised to do, particularly in the area of prospecting, if you're having weekly one-on-ones with them, please don't be afraid to ask one simple three-letter word, which is why. Why are you not doing the prospecting you promised to do? What's getting in the way? And here's what I got an insight for one of my clients, a really, really great operator, a huge heart, really wants their team to win. However, and they're doing amazing work with their one-on-ones. And in the one-on-ones though, what's been happening is they are offering advice, they're offering tips, they're filling the space, they're unpacking the impacts, they're exploring what the inevitable future is. And so there's no space for the individual that's not fulfilling their intentions to have a breakthrough or see something for themselves. So leaders, when you're doing your one-on-ones, if you're looking at accountability and your people aren't doing what they promised to do, please don't fill the space. Just simply ask, what's getting in the way of you making your call target? And shut up. Hold that space, hold the tension, hold the pause and let them look. It'll be uncomfortable for some. But just sit there and if they're like, oh, I don't know, just go, okay. And if you did know, what would it be? And just sit there. There's something unbelievably powerful, you know, because if we just keep giving advice and tips and advice and tips and our insight, we're just kind of giving them more stuff. What we want to do is take the stuff away and make space for people to show up. Is this making sense? Does this make sense? Great leaders ask great questions and they shut up and they make space for people to see and feel stuff, even if it's uncomfortable. So please, leaders, make sure that you get comfortable being uncomfortable asking why. That's why most leaders don't ask, why are you not making your calls? Why are you not showing up to our sales meeting on time? Why did you not show up to that open for inspection? Ask why and not why is in, 
you know, giving them the bird and defensive, curious, stand in the shoes of curiosity, be Dr. Zeus about your team, curious, you know, just get curious about them, really critical. Uh, and finally, I also want to say, you know, too many leaders are not setting their people up for success. And I've spoken with a, a few people in the last two weeks, particularly they've employed people recently and they're like, oh, they're not working out. Now, listen, if, if then, and then they get shitty with the person, they are, oh, they're not working out, they're wasting, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, have you set them up for success? Do they A, have the skills to do what you've hired them to do and B, are they willing to use them consistently? Do they have a clear position description and do they have a clear intentional week? Not an ideal week, an intentional week. If, if, you, if, if you're a leader watching this too, here's the other thing I invite you to do. When you're doing your one-on-ones, have your team members, whether they be agents, BDMs, PMs, admin accounts, doesn't matter who, uh, have your team bring their laptops to the one-on-one -on -one and do some spot calendar checks, meaning just go, hey, listen, Fred, just open up your Outlook for me. And just let's look at your screen and have a look. Is their schedule allocated time to show up and do the stuff that matters or have they got it like, you know, tumbleweeds floating through their week? Don't blame your people as to why they're not performing. They're not performing under your leadership. They're not performing under your direction. They're not performing under your guidance. Have you set them up for success? Do they have a clear position description? Do they have an intentional week? Do they have a buddy? Do you have check-ins to see how they're going? Is it safe for them to make mistakes? And are you going to give them straight feedback? That's my question. Are you setting yourself up for success? Do you have a clear direction of where you're going? Do you have a clear why of what you're hoping to achieve? And is your calendar set to do the stuff that matters or are you getting distracted by shiny, sexy things or scrolling through other people's lives or trying to find a mate? Life is really short, my friends. I, I don't know why, but for some reason, I just feel the fragility of life right now. And I'm nearly 50. I'm, I want to live for another at least 50 years. I've got stuff to do. I've got people to love. I've got the world to see. Let's not waste this gift being stuck in the past and worried about a future. Be the author, not the story. Get strategic, not stuck in your beliefs about yourself, others in the world. We're going to be dust one day. You know, my father-in-law died a week and a bit ago and I drive past the street he lived on like every day and I don't know how many times I, I want to just pull, I can tell you, I just want to pull in and say hi. And my, my daughter, youngest daughter and I went out to the movies the other night and I'm sitting at the movies and I'm like, that's it. Like I'll never see him again and I'll never speak to him again. Here one day, gone the next. And life is continuing. People are going around their business ordering their fancy lattes. I'm just going to leave it on that. I love you. Thanks for spending your time with me. Thanks for showing up. I hope you got something. What did you get for yourself out of everything I talked about, which was, you know, um, you know, how long does it take you to come back from a setback and what's your definition of yourself and are you resting? Are you restoring yourself to your original form? Are you being the story or are you being the author? Are you blaming everybody else because of why your things are the way they are or are you showing up and taking responsibility and creating a life that you love? Does your life have workability? That was the other thing I was going to unpack. Here's what we tend to do. We label things. So things happen and it's either good or bad or right or wrong. Don't worry about that. That'll activate your ego. When stuff's happening, just go, does this work? Does this work? Yes or no? If you get stuck in, oh, that's good or that's bad or that's right or I'm wrong or that's I'm good or I'm bad, you're going to activate your ego and you're just going to try to keep proving yourself. Things are happening. They either work or they don't. And I'm not saying you take the heart out of things. I'm just saying you have the power to create your reality. Your higher self knows exactly what you need. And all you need to do is trust your gut because gut is simply an acronym for give up thinking. And we can, when we get out of here and we get into here and we're willing to show up and be vulnerable and we give up the concern about what other people think of us, my friends, that's where the magic lies. So I want you to have a magical life because you deserve it. 
And we're not going to attract wondrous things for ourselves when we're stuck in the emotional quicksand of fear and anxiety, beating ourselves up with the wind whip we need to go and wave the wand. So as I wrap up, I invite you just to again reflect on one of my favorite quotes from Marianne, uh, from um, not Marianne Williamson, uh, Maya Angelou. <clears throat> Just remember, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Thank you for making me feel worthwhile by showing up and uh, tuning into this airtime of Rapid Fire Friday. The whole intention is to reflect stuff to you that perhaps you can hear one thing for yourself out of that last half an hour that if you applied would make a phenomenal difference to yourself in your life. I want you to win. I want you to be happy. And uh, it's okay if you're not, but just notice, are you getting a benefit out of hanging out in suffering villain victimhood and you just need a bit of courage to get into action? And I know you know what to do. You know what to do. Stop avoiding doing it. Take one action today to love yourself and others. The world is screaming for compassion. The world is screaming for connection. A little less blame and a little more blessings. So I love you. Thank you for all this beautiful love that is being broadcast. I'll be back for Monday, uh, Mindset Mastery Monday. And on Mindset Mastery Monday, I'm going to explore next week how our beliefs uh, and what we believe can and can't influence what we do. And you can tune in to watch me put a straw through a potato. Random, I know, but there's a great metaphor in it. Tune in 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time next Monday for Mindset Mastery Monday. For those in real estate, happy show day tomorrow. Speak from your heart. People will feel it. Thanks for spending your time with me. If there is something you're personally navigating and you need a hand, well, and just book in a complimentary discovery session by going onto my website, all the W's, tmjcoaching.com.au, and you can book yourself a free half an hour discovery session. I'm going to go kick ass with my beautiful assistant, Jade, and uh, she's just completing week three. She's doing a great job. Good on you, Jade. Morning, Jade. Morning. <laughs> and, uh, but first... 17-year-old needs to get the, pe the L plates on the car and drive to school. I'm going to go do that and get us a chai. I love you. Go be great. You were born that way. We'll speak soon. Chat to our friends on uh, Instagram. <clears throat> and goodbye to you, our beautiful friends here on Facebook. Have a great weekend.